Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you two different ways to upload any resource to a provider, whether it's a PDF or an image. I'll show you how to do that inside Active Pieces as usual, that's what we use for automation. We will examine different strategies on how we can retrieve an image and upload to Google Drive and WordPress. This will also apply to a binary file, so not just for images, but it can also be for PDF or text file, whatever it may be is going to work but for our demonstration purposes we're going to be using images using a provider such as pixabay for instance here where they have an api this can require an api key sometimes or some sort of authorization uh, getting the images will require a different approach versus a static url here where it's already publicly exposed so this video is going to be jam-packed with information so sit back and enjoy this video all right, back to an active pieces here. Let's examine a few scenarios here. So I added a trigger here that works every hour, but it doesn't really matter. But for this demo purposes, we're just going to choose this as a, as a trigger to initiate the flow. So the, the first thing we're going to examine here is the Google Drive, right? So when you look at the Google Drive, when you upload a file, for instance, after you get the connection in, it requires a file name for instance test.jpg as you can see here it's requiring you to fill the file name right so the the requirement for this is either a file url or base64 to upload and the second one we're going to look into is wordpress right so when you create a new post using the connection that we have so you want to pick the title here so the content this is the actual content of the article. And you can see here for the featured media, right? This is the one that's going to be uploaded. But this one is expecting a URL here. So this one will upload directly to WordPress using this URL. So there's really no other option here. So there's no BizBase 64. So you're slightly stuck with just a single option. So we're going to go and look into these different uh, scenarios and see how we can tackle these two different scenarios and see how we can work it out. All right, let's first take a look at Pixabay's API here and how we're going to how we can use it. It's actually quite simple because everything is being passed in through the actual URL here as a parameter. The only thing that's required is the key. The queue is a URL encoded search term. So if you have multiple words, you're going to have to encode it so that it can pass it properly. The image type, by default, you get an all, but if you just want to limit it to photo, you're going to have to pass in uh, the photo as a type. The orientation is horizontal or vertical, just depending on, let's say you're blogging and you just want, you're just very specific about your orientation. Uh, you can pass that in and you can, you know, find certain width, certain height and so forth. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to copy this API URL here and we're going to go back to active pieces. It's very simple in this regard because everything is being passed in through the URL. So you don't need to pass in. It's not a post where you have to pass in everything in, in, in the body or, or you're going to have to pass in a authorization uh, via the headers. So the way they, to use their API is basically to use the uh, HTTP get method. Uh, we're going to pass in the URL here. Like I said, there's nothing on the header, so we, we can ignore this part right here. But for the query parameters, you can actually pass in the key here, uh, the image type, and the photo. Well, let's say I just want to limit the result to a photo. And if, let's say for the query string, let's say you want to, you have two words, let's say cat and dog, for instance, you're going to have to url encode it so you're gonna have to do this to get rid of the empty space in between it but let's say you just want to and if you're just doing a one word it doesn't really matter just gonna get rid of that but just be cautious here for the queue which is a query keyword here uh, that's how we're going to implement it so we're going to hit the test here retest and we get a 200 here and we get a bunch of results we get the page url preview url so let's say you get a, you want to use like a thumbnail for your images you get like a large image url in the web format url so most likely you're probably going to use this 
URL over here. And with the way you upload that to Google Drive is to set obviously the file name so we can we can use the result that we get back from the get uh, from the send photo re HTTP request that we did. We're gonna go to body, oops, to body, and then we can use the hits. And you know, for our intents and purposes, for let's say if we're blogging, we just want to get the first one, the zero index, which is the very first one. So we just want to get a file name here. Looks like we can't. Uh, we're just gonna use the ID here, and we're just gonna we're just gonna put dot JPEG here. And for the file itself, this is the actual URL. Since we really that's kind of the only option that we have, and then we're gonna go down to hits, and then we say about web format URL. So and then we're gonna just up, upload it this way. We can test it. It should work since everything that's being returned is publicly available images. So and for WordPress purposes, right? So for the feature image fe featured images, we're gonna we, we can use the same format. We're gonna grab it from the body here. Grab it from the hits. We're gonna grab the first first item in the results. And then we're gonna use the web format URL. And obviously we don't have to specify the file name here, but that's pretty much it. How you how you can handle this part and add the image to a either a WordPress or Google Drive. The next approach is quite obvious, but I just wanna just mention it here just for completeness. So anytime you have a public URL here, you can just go ahead and copy that and just paste it here as a featured media URL. Uh, you can do the same thing for for Google Drive since it's just a file URL. So it would work perfectly. Um, I just want to mention it here just for completeness. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example here, this time from Robbly API. I created a new HTTP request uh, piece as part of the flow here. And a few things that you have to pass in here as part of the template. In this case, it's code in a name. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, it actually produces an error here. It says a network dis disconnection. Let's look at their API here. It's quite simple. It's just their endpoint, the rendered, and then you're gonna get pass in the file name. And some requires authentication, such as this, where you pass it in as part of the headers. This actually doesn't, but for some reason it's still not working. So we're gonna examine how to tackle this particular issue and how we how to handle it. All right, let's go ahead and tackle the Robbly issue that we had. So now since the HTTP request piece fails for us. Uh, we can no longer use that, so we're gonna go with the the coding approach, right? So we're gonna uh, remove and just clean this up, this flow a little bit, and remove the other ones. And this we're gonna change this to get photo of from Robbly API, because that's that's what we're doing in this code. So we're we're passing a few things: the template ID, the file type, which is a JPEG. I'm gonna show you in a moment why we need that, but the name. It's part of the template. That's what's one of the requirement parameters that's being passed in and the quote. So we're going to go ahead and expand this one and we're going to add a few things here as part of this. The most important one is Axios to make a HTTP request. And the next one that we're going to do use is UID to generate the uh, random GUID that we're going to be using with the code. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be importing the package right up on the top. And then the next the next part of the se sequence is we're gonna, in the code, we're gonna remove the return true here. So we're not gonna return the true, but instead we're gonna return the base64 image and the file name that we generate from this code. So the first line here that we're gonna be doing is to extract the quote name, file type, template ID from the inputs that we provided earlier. And the next piece, to the, the puzzle is the actual URL here. So now we're just interpolating the API. We're gonna pass in the template ID, render dot, and the file type would be the JPEG or the PDF, whatever it may be. And then any parameters that we want to happen is gonna happen after the question mark here is the quote and the name. That's gonna be part of the URL here. And lastly, we're gonna return the actual implementation of the code here. So we're gonna call this function called get base64 from image 
and pass in the URL and we're going to re- await this and return it back to the calling code piece. All right, so I'm going to go here, go to the bottom and paste in a few functions here, a couple of functions actually. So first is the get base64 from image, which accepts a UIL string. First thing we're going to do is to make a get request. Since this one actually doesn't require a headers, I'm going to remove this, but this is just for an example. So let's say your the API that you're trying to get the image from requires an HTTP headers. You can add this headers right here and you can add an authorization and the in the API key. But, but for this example, we're not going to be using that. What's important here is we're passing in the response type array buffer because that's what's expect, what we're expecting to get out of this. So once we get the response, we're going to wait that. And the next step we're going to be doing is to get the content type. So we're going to get the content type from this. It could be based on what we're getting. So let's say we, we, we pass in a file type of JPEG. We're going to get a image forward slash JPEG, JPG. Or if you're doing like a PDF, it would be application forward slash PDF. So that's going to be the mime type. And that's, that's what we're going to get from this one. So the API is going to return this headers in the content type section. And the next thing that we're going to do is to actually convert the data that we received to base64 text. And we're, we're going to pass it in here as a variable. And the next thing we're going to do is to actually combine those, those two things, right? So we're going to get the data, which is the MIME type, semicolon here, base64. And we're going to pass in the actual image data, which is the base64 that we created on line 24. And the next thing we're going to do is generate a unique file name. We're going to use v4 from UUID library. So we're just going to generate a random GUID. We're going to do a, we're going to grab the file extension using the MIME type. So like I mentioned before, application forward slash PDF, we're just going to go ahead and, and split that into two. And we're just going to grab the the second part of that segment, the array, once we split it. And that's when we arrived with this file name that we have here. And then in the end, we're going to return the object that contains the base64 image and the file name over here. We can go ahead and test this code just to make sure it's working and it should. All right. So it renders this very long string, but this is something that we can use on the next step. All right, once we get the code in place, we can go ahead and go uh, close the full screen and go test this step. As you can see here, if you do an expand here, you're going to see both the uh, base64 image. It includes the, the data mine type of, of image forward slash JPEG and the base64 itself as part of the string. And the file name would be this long random file name dot JPEG. Okay. All right, so now how are we going to use this for uploading to Google Drive? Very simple. Uh, we can use, actually, we can use the same one that we get back. That's why we have the code in place. So we're going to go ahead and drill down to the get body here and use the file name that we generated. So that's what we're going to use for the file name. And obviously for the file, this one takes a file URL or base64 to upload, right? So in this case, we can use the base64 very simple and this is you know we can we can pick a any folder that we want in google drive and that's how you upload to google drive using basic all right so we're going to tackle wordpress next and how are we going to handle this since if you can remember this only accepts the url it can't take in a base64 text like google drive has so the way we can go around this is to actually read the file that we generated we uploaded from the third step and we're actually going to read it. So we're going to go ahead and create or add a Google Drive step over here. And we're going to go ahead and read the file, right? So we're going to do a connection and the file ID itself would be the one that we uploaded from the previous step, right? And then we can obviously get the file name here from destination file name. Probably don't care about this, but we're just going to specify anyways. We're going to do a test on this step and see here everything's been uploaded temporarily to the uh, active pieces server with this key so now 
we have this temporary URL that we can use. Now we can go to WordPress and go ahead and use that uh, URL that we retrieved from the previous step. Quick and easy, right? So that's how you take care of this WordPress and add a feature image using our URL. All right, as a bonus of this video, obviously there's already a stability AI integration in place inside Active Pieces, but I just wanna include it just, in, just to kind of give you a complete idea of, of, of how everything works. So once you have entered a prompt here, right? Set up a connection. You're gonna pick your engine of your choice. Pick 1024 here. I picked the height of 1024 and 1024. Obviously there's a limitation of each type of engine ID requires height ID and width ID. And there's like specifications on, on what you can use on these fields. Just kind of be aware of those, those things. You can add in a sampling here if you want to do some sampling. So I'm gonna skip a lot of these steps and guidance and once I get that, we're going to do a test here. This one takes a little bit of time as the model itself has to generate the image from your prompt. And once it's done, it, it returns an array here with a single object within an image and it has the actual URL to it. So the way you're going to upload it is you're going to go ahead and you know, go back to your WordPress instead of the reading file here from your from your WordPress, you're gonna select stability AI step, which is in the bottom and just select the first one and just gonna insert it. Same thing with uploading to Google Drive. Obviously this one has to come first. So if this step happens to be next in line like this, like this, obviously you're gonna go ahead and select stability image here and specify the image URL. All right, that's going to be it for today. If you get some value out of this video, please consider subscribing to my channel to see more future videos. Please leave a comment if there's any tutorial that you'd like to see me do in the future. Bye for now.